Check, check. Praise God. I want to welcome everyone in this evening. Let's all stand. Let's worship God. Let's sing that song, Marching and Moving. Marching, moving, onward and upward. The kingdom of God is on the forward advance. We're taking dominion over the darkness. We're tearing down the works of the enemy's hand. We've got the victory. We've got the victory, we've got the victory, and it's by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I am what I am by the blood of the Lamb, we're conquerors through Jesus the King. We're marching, we're moving, onward and upward. The kingdom of God is on the forward advance. We're taking dominion over the darkness. We're tearing down the works of the enemy's hand. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. I'm gonna testify, yes, I got the victory. I'm gonna testify, yes, I got the victory. I am what I am by the blood of the Lamb. Come. One more time, we're marching and moving. We're marching, we're moving, onward and upward. The kingdom of God is on the forward advance. We're taking dominion over the darkness. We're tearing down the works of the enemy's hand. We've got the victory, we've got the victory, we've got the victory, and it's by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I'm going to testify, yes, I got the victory, I am what I am by the blood of the Lamb, the gates of hell. Gates of hell shall not prevail against the armies of the Lord. As we march along, we sing a song of the one that set us free. We use God's word as a two-way sword against the enemy. Emmanuel, we're marching in your name. Emmanuel. That was slain, Emmanuel has risen, hallelujah, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. One more time, the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the armies of the Lord. March along, we sing a song of the one that set us free. We use God's word as a two-edged sword against the enemy. Emmanuel, we're marching in your name. Emmanuel, the Lamb that was slain. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we're gonna shout it on the streets. He is Lord. He's 
the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're going to shout it on the streets. He is Lord. And every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. time king of kings he's the king of kings and lord of lords we want to shout it on the streets he is lord he's the king of kings yes amen and lord of lords we're gonna shout it on the streets he is lord and every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, every demon tremble, every boy shall rise and say, Jesus is Lord. Praise God, I was, I was sitting at home today with our grandchildren and I began to think, you know, God is so good. I just cannot imagine what life would be without God right now and what he's done in our lives. Let's sing that song, Can't Stop Praising His Name. Praising His name, I just can't stop. Praising the name, I just can't stop. Praising the name of Jesus. Can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow. Christ is Lord forever. Can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising the name. I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising the name. I just can't stop. Praising the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ. Fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you, fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you, fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. I've redeemed you and I call you by Child, you are mine. You walked through the water and I'll be there. And through the flame, and you will not no way be drowned. You will not no way be drowned. For I am with you, says the Lord. Fear not. Fear not. Yeah. 
God. We're here to lift our hands, to give Him praise and honor. I don't know about you, but I want to see God move tonight. Let's sing that song. Let's slow it down. You're my all in all. tonight a strive green
judicial system in a uh, in a in a position working with troubled juveniles, and I know there's been times, uh, even as you know, a, a baseball dad, when you think the umpire's not calling a fair game, <laughs> you think you know someone's put a twenty in his pocket, and the odds are against you. I I hope that you have never felt that and the devil might try to challenge you to feel that way with God But you have to trust him from his word. He is a God of faithfulness upstanding righteousness He is the one who upholds justice. He is the reason there is righteousness in the earth Amen, and we have a father and we have a God who does not fail to do what is right Amen, even when we do he's merciful to redeem us clean you off again He is a God that is good to you and me. Amen, so that's what we're worshiping, his faithfulness, his justice. And, uh, uh, you know, my, I always heard it for years. My dad said, don't ever ask God. Don't ever tell him, give me what I deserve. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good prayer line with God uh, because we don't, we don't even deserve to be here tonight. But yet, here we are. Amen. And wonderful to be in the presence of God with you. Would you pray with me? Uh, I, you might be new to this. You may not have prayed, you know, since your last peanut butter jelly sandwich. But I want to ask you to pray tonight. I want to ask you to lift your voice to a God who hears you. This is his house. Well, you know, there, we have men in this building that worked on the drywall and placed these tiles. But uh, we built this that we would have a place to meet with God. And so let's use that tonight. Let's pray. You can lift your personal needs. But if you ever want help praying with your needs, we have a prayer list in the back on a table before every service in that back corner we have a list you can write your prayer request and we want to pray with you for the things that are on your mind amen we're going to cast our cares on god we're praying for our country we're praying for our president uh, no matter how you feel about them there's decisions made in the white house affecting your house so pray for joe biden kamala harris their families for salvation for deliverance uh, uh, from uh, uh, any other assault of hell that's trying to uh, hijack our nation. Let's pray for America this year. Amen. Let's lift up our fellowship headship, Pastor Greg Mitchell. Amen. And his wife, Lisa. Amen. Uh, our, our, our Pastor Alvin Smith tonight, the Tucson congregation. Amen. Pray for Pastor Alvin, his family, and his daughters. Amen. Let's ask for God's grace on these needs from a list. John Thompson, David Lee, and Randy Corrigan for salvation. Maria needs healing. Kevin, praying for healing in his legs. Jesse Rowe, Shannon Shaw for salvation. Zach Stomper to get back to Jesus. Eva Fernandez for healing. Christine Fraser, Alexis and Anthony, Alyssa and Mr. G for salvation. Chris Fuller needs healing. Nader family for salvation. And uh, Guerrero family for legal favor. Mark Marshall Jr. for salvation. We're not forgetting our baby churches. We have a missionary couple right now in Nassau, Bahamas, and uh, they're not drinking from coconuts on the beach. Uh, he's, he's desperately searching for a building, and so we're asking for God's favor, that God give us a property, a place that you have designed and made to meet with people, to save some uh, Bahamians, if that's how you properly say it. Amen. Let's pray for our church in Denton in Sholo, in Knoxville, in Conway, Myrtle Beach, many needs to pray for. Lift your needs with me. We know God cares. And I want to ask if Mr. John Zaretic, would you please open us in prayer? Amen. From where you are. Let's pray. God, we love you. God, we praise you. We hope in you. Trust in you.
Amen, amen. Welcome to the Potter's House. Turn and give your neighbor a holy high five. We're glad to have you with us. shall do valiantly it is he treads down our enemies we will sing and shout the victory christ is king for god has won the victory and set his people free his word has slain the enemy the earth shall stand and see that There it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight uh, and being with us to pray and to worship God. Again, visitors, I think every service of this revival, we've had first-time visitors, and that's a wonderful sign. That is why we're here. I uh, hope you know it. New converts and visitors, you are the lifeblood of this church. You may not even know it yet, but you're who we're here for. Amen. And you're who Jesus came to the earth and died for. So, I'm sure you'll hear more about that tonight. Every service is a gospel service. Amen. Uh, Pastor Alvin's been here for three days, but the revival's just starting tonight, he said. So uh, this is great. So uh, I, I want to ask if you will, uh, I just got a text. Our, our, we have a new convert couple in our church. Amen. Uh, uh, Matthew and Aline, their baby, Abriel, they're on their way to the hospital. Uh, baby Abriel's had breathing issues for a couple days, fever. And so... Uh, if we could pray, just add for add Abriel to your prayers. Amen. We are asking God for a miracle at the hospital tonight. Amen. We're uh, trusting God. Amen. We cast our cares upon him. I have just a few announcements. If you will uh, pay attention, there is uh, two new announcements. First of all, men on Monday, this coming Monday, we are going to Las Vegas for a men's discipleship. So uh, once a month, Pastor Scott Lamb has great headship come into the church in Las Vegas. Uh, this is the West Las Vegas Church, and so uh, Pastor Paul Stevens is going to be preaching on Monday. You know this starts at 7.30. We will be going up in the church van, uh, but some of you may go in your own vehicles, so just so you know, uh, prayers at 6.30. The service starts at 7.30. That's for our men, uh, a sermon tailored for men. Uh, pull off the, the gloves and the fluff and bare-knuckle sermons. Praise God. So look forward to that on Monday. We're also going to send an impact team to Henderson, Nevada. That's our baby church, amen, uh, on April 27th. So we're just three Saturdays away uh, from that. So there is a sign-up sheet on the back behind that handsome single usher. His name is Chris Fuller. I could give you his address, <laughs> but you have to know him first. Uh, but right behind him is a sign-up sheet for the impact team. Please go with us. Uh, uh, you, you, you might say, I have trouble evangelizing. Well, come with us. We will show you how. I'll go personally to the door with you, amen, because this is something Christians need to do. We must to evangelize. This is our, our last command from Jesus. We are to go make disciples. How do you do that? You share the gospel. If you can't do that with us, do you do it anywhere? So I invite you to come and evangelize with us on an impact team April 27th. Praise God. Our ushers can come on forward, amen, going to take an offering in this place as I get my Bible. Because God gave me a verse in the prayer room. And I want to bring this to you. An offering out of Ecclesiastes. That might sound depressing. But uh, <laughs> I want you to listen to this here. My dad has always explained this. This is uh, wisdom. The wisdom of man. And often just how to live best here. Uh, but knowing that all of this is vanity. And, and everything 
matters for what comes after but I see this applied to our finances out of Ecclesiastes in chapter 5 listen to this I start in verse 13 there is a severe evil which I have seen under the sun and remember this is written by what God calls the wisest man that ever lived so that means this is something we should pay attention to Solomon had an incredible wisdom a gift of wisdom I'll say it again there's a severe evil which I have seen under the sun riches kept for their owner to his hurt but those riches perish through misfortune when he begets a son there is nothing in his hand what he's saying is when a rich man has a son the, the son comes out with empty hands as he came from his mother's womb naked shall he return to go as he came and he shall take nothing from his labor which he may carry away in his hand Solomon's making this observation we're born with naked nothing and we leave with naked nothing we know many other religions they'll put gold in the tombstone the Egyptians would uh, pharaohs and leaders and men of wealth and substance would be buried with their slaves sometimes alive they've been buried with horses alive as if it's going to be a chariot to carry them we've seen it you know Greek mythology and, and Roman myths and, and their, their culture placing the coins over their eyes a coin in their mouth to pay the the boatman over the river sticks so there was a thought that they might take some of this wealth from this life into the next but you know what I've also seen I've I've seen raiders and I'm not just talking about Indiana Jones people who have broken to the tombs and guess what those gold coins were still there and they took them they have plundered the graves of the wealthy we have done this and now their bodies and their wealth is in museums but the observation of Solomon is <coughs> we are born with nothing and we leave with nothing so let me ask you an honest question maybe you could reach in your pocket and grab a penny grab a coin on that coin you'll see a date sometimes that date is older than you you know what that tells me that penny was older than me someone else once said it was theirs Someone else once owned that penny. For me to call it mine. <coughs> you know currency doesn't have value until you give it? <coughs> you understand that? Currency doesn't have purpose until you give it. We have several women here that work at the banks. <coughs> it's just a piece of paper. And as the time goes on, the metals are getting less and less precious. They're throwing, you know, uh, a cheap metal instead of actual copper. <coughs> I'm asking you what is really yours? what is honestly yours <coughs> what I see in the wealth that you've been given because you cannot take it with you it is a test all wealth that's ever passed through your hands <coughs> is a test from God on what you'll do with it you won't take the money with you when you die you will take the record of what you did with your money with you you will take a record God is keeping books and I want to ask you what better purpose could filthy lucre have than be used that people can meet Jesus Christ I want to challenge you to give tonight and I tell you in one day advance tomorrow's our love offering for Pastor Alvin Smith that means our entire offering tomorrow will go to him and his family <laughs> as this is his ministry and, and the churches he preached at we, we give him a gift and this provides for his family remember that tomorrow a love offering for Pastor Alvin let's bless <coughs> excuse me gift and giver Manuel Salcido please pray
see See if I can be completely yours I'm yours, Lord good yeah praise the lord amen it's good to see you are you glad to be in the house of god tonight man i tell you what we had a song service tonight boy you almost had to come and tie me down i was uh, i don't want to get thrown out the church i was feeling my god jesus was walking down the aisle tonight and my goodness and this is such a blessing to see you turn with me to second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 8, if you will, in the word of the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1, 1 through 8. We're going to read that in just a moment. As I grow older, I realize that I'm becoming more and more like my father in so many ways. Although we are a designer's original, there's a truth of genetic code. And my daddy, he would He'd be driving down the road in his car or in his truck. He'd be going to the neighborhood, and he'd see a piece of paper. He would pull over and pick the piece of paper up. Well, about a couple of months ago, I was driving down the road in my neighborhood, and I saw a piece of paper, and I pulled over and I picked it up. I said, Lord, that's my daddy. And the truth of genetic code that runs through us From generation to generation, although you are a designer's original, everyone is distinct and everyone is different. Everyone has their own fingerprint. Everyone has their own eye print. Everyone has their own tongue print. Everyone has their own hand print. So you are a designer's original, but there's a truth of genetic code. It is also true if you're a child of God. The nature that's in God is also running through you. There is a DNA, if you will, a divine nature activated in your life. As you are saved now and you are walking with God, there should be some likenesses in your life of God. God should be able to look over the banners of heaven and see something of himself in you. When you have children, you should see something of yourself in that child. You should see some lips or some nose that look like you. And say, that's Pastor Alvin's baby right there. When God looks over the balance of heaven, he should say, that's my boy, that's my girl. You don't want, to, I mean, you don't want God to say, I'm not the baby's daddy. I mean, you want God to say, yes, amen, that's my child right there. Amen, he, he's exemplifying. Amen, he is showing forth the nature of his father. The question is now, we have two natures at work. We have the nature of our fallen father, and we have the nature of our heavenly father. The question is, how do we activate the divine nature of God, how do we overthrow, if you will, this fallen nature and not continue to make the same mistakes, I mean, the same repeat performances? How do we experience God's nature and show forth his glory in our lives? So with that said, I want to preach a sermon I've called DNA 2.0, Divine Nature Activated. I like it, 2.0. Yeah. And so we're going to read together this This scripture is powerful tonight, so I want you, amen, to read it with me. You've been doing pretty good reading. I'm going to give you a C plus, but but God's the God of second chances. Amen. Cheers. DNA 2.0. Let's read together on the count of three. Amen. Pause at the comma. Stop at the periods. Let's read together. One, two, three. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you 
through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is so good, y'all. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge. It's so good, y'all. And to knowledge temperance, and the temperance patience, and the patience godliness and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness, charity. For if these be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give him a clap offering. <clears throat> Divine Nature 2.0. My first thought is, the first Adam or natural reactions. What I've learned in the Word of God that there are behavioral patterns. There are repetitious patterns that flow from generation to generation. And all you have to do is kind of look back in your ancestry. Patterns of sickness, patterns of of high blood pressure, patterns of diabetes, patterns of cancer that run from generation to generation all kinds of patterns, uh, patterns of bad behavior, patterns of mental instability, patterns of hatred, uh, and patterns of, of just meanness that move from generation to generation, uh, pattern of, of alcoholism, uh, patterns of habits uh, and struggles and setbacks uh, uh, that is seen throughout your family history. And all you have to do is just kind of look back and, and you can see that many times all you're doing is fighting your daddy's devils. There is nothing new under the sun. All you're doing is going through the same things that they've gone through and you're repeating the performances and this is what the devil has done for so many years. The devil really has no new tricks. He's just using the same thing again and again and again. And you have to be able to look at your life and look at the situation now and look at the kind of decisions that you're making and you have to begin to distinguish is this a pattern in my life. It's just something that has been around for a long time in our lives. And what it teaches you is that the problems and afflictions did not start with you. A long time ago, Adam and Eve put a cycle in motion that has perpetuated pain from generation to generation. Romans 5.12 says it like this. Now, these scriptures are powerful you need to understand Hallelujah, the word of God. Romans 5.12. Put that up there, Jimmy, when I call it out. Romans 5.12. It's, it's very powerful now, and it gives us understanding about God. It, and it says this, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Whereby, as by one man sin entered the world, and death now has passed from one man to everybody. All this is is a cycle now that started with one man, and everybody has fallen behind, amen, that failure of that one man. Everybody now is living under that curse. This is, this is the struggle uh, that we're having today. The passing upon all men speaks uh, of the truth of cycles uh, that exist in the earth realm. Everything comes full cycle. The galaxies, uh, seasons, uh, even the human body works on a cycle. Everything in the world now, amen, is based on this truth of cycles. The world operates on cycles. The galaxies operate on cycles. You cannot have a child. The woman's body operates on cycles. So everything now in the world now has this truth of cycles. Ecclesiastes, you got that one, four through seven? Yeah, he's back. He, he's back in the game now. Ecclesiastes, put that up there, brother. There it is. 
I'm looking for it right here. One generation passes away, another generation cometh, but the earth abides forever. Listen to this. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to the place where he arose. The wind goeth to the south, and turneth about unto the north, and comes to Bullhead. No, no, no. It whirleth. It whirleth about continually, and the wind return again according to his circuits. Listen to this. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from which the rivers come, thither they return again. Everything now, the wind works on cycles. The rivers work on cycles. Everything now is moving according to a course. Many of us are simply stuck in a cycle. We find ourselves doing the same thing. We get out of it for a while, but we find ourselves being pulled back in that force, and we find ourselves going round and around, doing the same thing again and again and again. Uh, it, is, it is the nature of the beast. I'll prove it to you. In Genesis 26, 1 through 6, this is probably one of the most powerful stories in the Bible. And I love this story, and let me set it in, in context for you. It is, it is Abraham and Sarah, and they're going to journey to a country called Gerar. Put it up there for me, Genesis 21 through 6. They're about to get ready to go through this country, and the Bible says as they're about to go, he turns to his wife and says to her, since you are very beautiful, if we go to this city, tell them that you are my sister. Don't tell them that you are my wife because they'll kill me and her brother don't want to die. So tell them that you're my sister, okay? He goes to this city, and we're going to read together right now. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. That's the name of the city. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. That's a nightmare. For the woman which thou hast taken, she is a, a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near to her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? I like this. Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. He's talking to God. I like, I, I like this. I like this conversation. In the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hand have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this in, in integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. So, God intervenes, and God saves them. Now, a generation later, 40 years later or so, he has a son, and Abraham's son is named Isaac. Somebody read the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Isaac. And so Isaac now, Isaac now, he also has a wife, and her name is Rebecca. And the Bible says they're about to get ready to take a journey. 40 years later now. Okay, a generation. Let's read now together. And God said unto him, uh, no, no, no. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. It's the same city, isn't it? Go to verse, the next verse. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my, but he feared to say she is my wife, lest said he, the men of the place, should kill me for Rebekah because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out a window and saw him and saw and behold Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, what's your daddy's name? No, no, he said, <laughs> and said, behold of a surety, she is thy wife. How said it thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him because I said lest I die for her. Now watch this, this is powerful. And Abimelech said, what is this that thou hast done to us? One of the people might have lightly have lying with thy wife, and thou should have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all the people, saying, he that touches this man, his wife, shall surely be put to death. He feared God. Then Isaac, everybody, let's read together, one, two, three. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. 
And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. So Abraham tells a lie in Gerard to Abimelech about his wife. And a generation later, his son does the same thing. A cycle that moves from generation to generation. Oh, the same sin. Nothing new under the sun. The devil sowed that seed and that seed perpetuated itself from Adam and Eve into you and I. And the world has gone crazy. And folks are doing the same nonsense that they did in the Roman Empire. They are doing it here. And Babylon is being recreated all over again. Over and over and over. And so we see this in the world today. And so what is surging through the veins of every human being is the nature of your father. When I speak of nature, I'm talking about likeness. The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. It speaks to the truth of epigenetics. It means likeness in behavior. There are certain, there are certain families that have certain traits. Certain families are nice. The Smith family, they're a nice family. They, they all smile. And I'm telling you, all smile. Man, you just like your daddy. You smile. But there are some families you don't want to mess with. You said, don't mess with the Johnsons, y'all. Woo! When you see them coming, you walk the other way. Because there, there are traits, there's likeness and similarities that move from father to son and son to daughter and moves and moves throughout the family. Ah. Uh, what we learn is the cycle of likeness is based on the premises of a seed. Say seed. When it comes to humanity, the seed carries the DNA or the bloodline. Genesis 1, 11 through 12 says it like this. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit of his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. If you plant an orange tree, you get oranges. Apples, you get apples. Every seed brings forth his kind. Whatever is in the seed, the nature of the seed is seen. And the evidence it's in the seed. Uh, it's in the seed. And so, after his kind, simply everything in life reproduces after his kind. We see this with Adam and Eve. Genesis 5, 1 to 3 shows us the power of this seed. Now watch this now because you, if you miss this, you miss it all. This is the book of the generation of Adam in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. He's created in the image of God. He brought forth that seed, image of God. Huh? Listen, he was never a baby. Adam didn't have a mom or a daddy. Ah, ain't that something? That's, that's, that's rich right there. God made him after his kind in his likeness. Then the Bible says, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day they were created. Now there it is. Now watch this. And Adam lived 130 years. In that 130 years, what did Adam do? He sinned, didn't he? And he begot a son in his own, after his image, and called his name Seth. His son was not born in the image of, he was born in his own image, because you bring forth who you are. You produce your own kind. So Seth was not born in the image of God. He was born in the image of who? Of Adam. Uh, you got to, you got to get this, 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 this is good right here now. And so you begin to understand now this cycle now that begins to perpetuate itself uh, in the earth now. However, here's the kicker. No matter how powerful the DNA is, it does not diminish the power of the human will 
or your ability to choose this day. No matter what Adam did, Seth still has the ability to choose God. There's no matter how powerful the cycle is, nor how powerful the habit is, I have the ability to make a choice to break free of the cycle. And so with that said, consider the second Adam or a new seed. Let me get some water here. Mm. The second Adam or a new seed. In Genesis 26, after Isaac saw what happened, he told the same lie that his daddy told. God uses him to teach us how the divine nature of God is activated to break this cycle in this life. Genesis 26, 12. He tells this same lie now. He looks at what he did, and this is what he does. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. He realizes that the premises of a cycle is based on a seed. He says, if I can get the right seed and sow the right seed, I can break the cycle. I can start a new cycle. All I need is the right seed. It is a foreshadowing of the life of Jesus. All I need now is the right seed, and that right seed now, amen, will break the old cycle and bring forth a new likeness and a new nature. My God. And he says, all I got to do is get the right seed. He gives us the revelation now of how God moves in the earth. What I learn is this. The cycle is not broken automatically, and he sowed in that land. He had to make some decisions. He has to make some investments. Investments now. He had to choose now. Amen. Between the good and the evil. He had to say, you know what? I have to do some things now. Amen. There's a part I have to play. It's not going to be automatic. If I'm going to see this change, if I'm going to affect succeeding generations, then I'm going to have to sow up. Amen. Some new seeds now in order to see new fruit, in order to see a new beginning now. And the Bible said he sowed in that land. Say with me, church, I'm coming where you live. Isaac understood the seed contained the power, the purpose, and the promise of his future. This is what Jesus has done for you and I. In 2 Peter 1, 4 and 5, whereby are given unto his exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, God's behavior, God's will, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence to add to your faith. Your faith is your behavior. It's your lifestyle now. He says, now God has given you everything you need to be what you have been called to be. So how can this happen now? How can I experience this new life? Is it going to be just because I come to church? Is it going to be just because I pray a prayer? How am I going to experience, amen, a a new cycle of blessing. How am I going to step into God's destiny and see newness in my life? That's what we all want. Say with me. Here we come. He says, therefore, because I'm a partaker of the divine nature, Paul is saying, God has some expectations of you. He says, because you have taken my seat now, you have received Jesus as your Savior, God is expecting something of you. <laughs> he says, God now is looking for some evidence of your life that you have his seed. He don't just want you to go around and say, I'm a Christian. He wants to see the evidence of it. <laughs> he wants to see it now in your behavior. He wants to see likeness in you. He wants to see something of him in you now. Oh, he wants to see this now. We have been in church for years, and there is no real evidence, amen, of this life in us. And he wants to see this flowing in and through us. The first word he uses now, he gives us two profound words here. He speaks it to us. The first word is diligence. Say diligence. In the Greek, it's the word spode. The verb is spodezo, 
which means to make haste or to be eager or to exert oneself. In simple terms, he's saying, I must be involved. There is effort required. I have to be involved. There has to be some in energy involved. I have to put something in this. It's not going to be automatic now. There's going to have to be some personal investment on my part. God says, I'm expecting you to bust a move. He, you just can't stay there and just say, well, God, I'm just waiting on you. God says, no, this is a participation thing, and you have to be involved in this in order to experience likeness. Oh, my goodness. Stay with me, church. And so, and so, Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. This is one of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. i got a lot of them, but this is one of my favorite. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Excuse me. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Look at it. Work out. Go back. Go, go back. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Next verse. Next verse. For it is God which, what? Worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. Now what he does now, he says, I need you to work some things out. I need you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He is saying this, if God moves, I must move. If God works, I must work. He said, it is God that worketh in me both the will and do of his good pleasure. So what it is now, it is God now who is provoking me to work. It is God now who is challenging me to work. It is God that is convicting me to work. Now, he is working in me to will and do of his good pleasure. Anything that you do that is good didn't come from you in origin with God. It was God that motivated you to do this. Oh my God. To even get saved, it was God. It wasn't you. It wasn't your idea. It was God that was working in your will to do his will. It's God that works in you. God that works in you, works in your will to go and forgive someone. That's God that's moving upon you to do his will. He's working, and if he works, I must, I must work. I must work now. Listen, listen, see, see salvation. Let me show you what salvation is. Salvation is almost like you are drowned. You're in the ocean. You're in the boat. You're fishing in the boat with Pastor Lobato. And you fall, you fall in the ocean. And he says, what, what, what you doing? You falling, you drowning. And you drinking water, and you going down. And you going down, and you drinking, you drinking water. And you say, Lord, save me. If you save me, I'll serve you. You know how y'all do it. Save me. And all of a sudden, God reaches over, he picks you up, and he puts you back in the boat. What did God just do? He just saved you. Okay, now listen now. But you are in a boat in the middle of the ocean. You're not on shore yet. Huh? Are you with me? It's a boat with oars in it. You feel me? He saves you, but in order to get to the shore, what do you have to do? You got to row, row, row your boat. Huh? Yeah, that's how it is when you get married. You get married, yeah, and you start going through stuff. And God says, you say, God, I can't take it no more. And God says, no, 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 roll, roll, roll your boat. You got to work through some stuff. Work it out, yeah. You want to get mad and leave the church. God says, no, roll, roll, roll your boat. You got to roll through some things. You got to work some things out. Salvation is good, but you are not on the shore yet. See, we ain't made it to heaven yet. Can I get a witness? We're still here, and God says you got to roll through some stuff. Roll through some storms. Roll through some disappointments. Roll through some setbacks. You got to roll when your heart is broken. Row! Row your boat. And when you row, you will reach the shore. Somebody give him glory. Woo! You got to row, man. See, you're not working to be saved. Listen. 
You're not working to be saved, but you're working to experience salvation. Oh, that's good right there. Yeah, you have to take steps of faith to experience God. You don't experience God just sitting here, what you going to do in my life? No, 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 no. Just, you better work some stuff out. You got to take some steps. You got to leave stuff. You got to say, no, 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 no. It's time to bust a move. Begin to move in God and experience all that God has for your life. Oh, stay with me, church. What it teaches us is that your relationship with God did not start with you, but it does involve you. This is how we grow. God moves upon your will or your soul, your mind, that you would do his will. You hear a message, and what that message does, it ministers to the new nature. The new nature, the new man. You got saved in the new nature now. Comes to church and you hear a word from God. All of a sudden, it feels good to you. It's ministering to the new man. The old man is dying. The old man doesn't have the power. See, the one that's the strongest is the one that you feed. It's the one that you, amen, allow to grow in your life. God says you got to add, amen, you got to add some things. You're not going to be everything that you need to be uh, until you add. This is the second word. It says add. A better translation would be to supply uh, or to minister to your faith, uh, to minister to your behavior and your lifestyle. Here we go. Now we got to add some stuff to our lifestyle. Now we got to add. We're not everything that we should be. Okay. So therefore we got to add some stuff. Huh? Yeah. We got saved, but we still got a long way to go. <laughs> our behavior now, our faith, our faith, our lifestyle. It's in the adding, the ministering, or the sowing that the divine nature begins to flow or come alive in you. God says, I want you to behave or act like me because you have my seed. I want my epigenetics to come through. I want people to see my love in you. I want people to see my grace in you. I want people to see my mercy in you. I want people to see my boldness in you. I want people to see my courage in you. I want them to see, amen, the life of God in you. So you got to add some stuff. You got to add. You got to add. Therefore, you have to add. He says this. This is what he says you got to add. He says, I think it's verse six, or, uh, verse 6 or 7. He says, therefore, you have to add virtue or knowledge, temperance, godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. This is what you must feed the new nature. Virtue is excellence. He says, I want you to be an excellent employee. I don't want you to just go to work, get on the clock and do nothing. I want you to go to work and excel. I want you to be like me. Oh, I want you to be like me. When you go up in there, man, people can see God in you. He said, man, that's an excellent worker. He's got a great attitude. He works hard. He comes here. She comes, she works, she does what she's supposed to do. She listens, exhale. Virtue. <laughs> I want you to behave like me, to add. See, any good cook, any good cook, before you give the food to somebody, what do a good cook do? They taste it. They, man, they cook it. And then they taste it and make sure they're going to give somebody some love. They taste it and they say, okay, yeah, it needs a little bit more cilantro, huh? And put a little some more cilantro in there. And need a little, a little, yeah, need a little bit more pepper, a little bit more pepper. They say, yeah, that's good right there. See, see, it's just like this, just like this. When you, when you go to work, you know you're going to deal with some crazy people. Okay, so before you go, you got to add some stuff. Uh, you got to, you say, yeah, I'm going to be dealing with Joe today, and Joe ain't got no sense. Joe just say anything you want to say. So, God, I just need you to add some patience, Lord, because I don't want to say nothing crazy. Huh? Add some patience. And when you're dealing with people, you got to add things in your life that Christ can be seen in you. It doesn't happen automatically. He said, you got the divine nature now. 
Now I want you to add. I want you to grow now. I don't want you to stay the same. I want you to evolve, if I can use that word in God. I want you to grow in him. I want there to be change in you. I want there to be a metamorphosis in your life that changes you from glory to glory. Once God enters my life with the divine nature, the old man must give way to the new man. God is saying you cannot give the new man old man's food. Hmm? You can't give the new man old man's food. Let me tell you something. I start reading the Bible. I start praying. I start adding. I don't even want things in the world. I don't even want to be in this world. I have to be honest with you. Man, the closer you get to God, you, you be like, you can have this. Because that new man, man, wants to see Jesus. Wants to see his father in the image that he has been born. Oh, you have you, the image and likeness. Now, all this stuff in the world, we just really passing through. And I really got that revelation that, you know, I really, I'm not really, I'm not crazy about this place. I just want to see folk get saved. Uh, uh, what is going to make you be a better person, a better wife, husband, student, pastor, is to add to who you are with eagerness. With eagerness is when you begin to add in soul, virtue, and knowledge, and temperance, patience, and godliness, and brotherly kindness, and charity, that you reap the promise. Listen to the promise in verse 8. Listen to the promise. If these be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, in Daniel's chapter 5, we have a man by the name of Belshazzar. The Bible says that Belshazzar now was this man that God was trying to deal with through the years. He's the son of Nebuchadnezzar. He's this, he's this, he's this king that's coming up now. But, but, but he's rebellious. and He's disobedient. And God has been trying to deal with him. And God has been trying to draw him. And God has been trying to love on this young man. But the Bible says God had had enough one day, and, and the Bible says a finger came out and rolled on the wall, and this is the writing that was written, many, many TKL Eupharistan uh, written on the wall. And the words of this, this is the interpretation of the thing. Many God has numbered that kingdom and finished it. TKL, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. God took his life and God put him in scales as he will take our lives and put it in scales. And he said, I weighed you, son, and there was nothing of me in you. You had no substance in your life. You looked good on the outside, but you were empty on the inside. There was nothing about you that reflected my nature at all. He says, you you're found wanting. You're empty. I, I tried and I tried to draw you and bring you closer. I, I tried to minister to you and say, son, add to yourself. You need more of me inside of you. You need more of my love inside of you. You're so full of yourself, full of the world. He says a day will come that God will weigh us in the scales. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much success you found in the world. If you ain't got God's stuff inside of you, uh, Wade found wanting. Uh, the Bible says he took the kingdom from him. Uh, he lost the blessing. Uh, he lost the favor. Uh, he lost God's, uh, amen, power in his life uh, because he would not uh, add to himself. We got to add, church. That's what salvation is all about. It's saying, man, I, I don't got what I need, man. I'm empty, man. I'm empty pasture. I look good. People say I look good. But if you go deep, there's nothing there. He has no substance in his life. And therefore, he brings no glory to God. As I close, in Genesis 26, 12, and 13, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. 
and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. He went forward. He went where? He didn't go in a circle. He went forward. Oh, he didn't go in a circle. He didn't repeat the same stuff again. Round and round and go. Will they go around in circles? He didn't go around in circles. He went forward. And the Bible says, the Bible says, listen, he grew. He grew. And became very great. He looked at what he did. And he says, I'm doing the same thing my daddy did. I'm doing the same mess. And if I'm doing this, my son going to end up doing it. And his son is likely to end up doing it. And this stuff ain't never going to stop. He says, he says, the buck stopped with me. He took a seed. He sowed it in the ground. It's a foreshadowing of Christ the seed of God that's going to break the very head of the serpent. Huh? That's going to give us a new beginning. That's going to give us the ability to go where? Forward. Forward forever and backwards never. And you say tonight, Pastor, I got some, I got some spodean to do. I got to some, some working to do. I got some adding to do. I got to add, man. I got to add. I can't sit there and get mad at people. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is a personal thing. Personal. I would feel bad about this. God said, no, 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 don't be feeling bad. Don't, don't, listen, take all the balloons back. No pity parties for you, son. No pity parties, no pity parties. He says, I've given you what you need. He says, I'm working in you to will and do of my good pleasure. It's God that, that's God moving on you right now. He's moving on you to get saved. Now what you got to do, you got to work it out. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You got to work it out. Thank you for bearing with me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate you. Once God enters my life with the divine nature, the old man must give way to the new man. And God is seeking to enter your life tonight. He is seeking to enter your heart. The Bible talks about God standing at the door of the church. And, 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 and it is the church, but it's also indicative of the man's heart. And he stands there and he knocks at that heart. And what he wants is he wants to come in and to have fellowship with you. He actually wants to come in and give you a wheel that can change your life. And that's his wheel to give you purpose, to give you power, and to give you promise. To give you purpose. Before I got saved, I had no purpose in my life. I was doing the same thing, going in circles. Waking up in the morning, looking forward to go smoke some dope. Going nowhere in my life. No purpose in my life. No direction in my life. No God. No God. No God. Many, many TKL your farms. Way to the balances and found wanting. No God. And God will weigh you tonight. And there's nothing there. Nothing of substance. Nothing of life. Nothing of God. And you say tonight, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus because I realize I'm empty. And people may see me one way, but when I look at the mirror, I know who I am. 
I know what I am. And tonight I'm going to ask you, preacher, will you pray for me? I've come as a friend of a friend. I've come as a classmate or a co-worker. And I sat in this service tonight and I felt God touch me. And if that's you, I want you to lift your hands and say, pray for me quickly. Just lift your hands up. Say, pray for me. I've come tonight. Just raise your hands. God bless you. Raise your hands. Lift it up high to Jesus. Say, Lord, I, I really do want to be saved from my sins. I've come. God bless you, sister. God bless you here. Just raise your hands. Say, you know what? I don't, I don't want to fight God anymore. I, want to, I don't want to fake it till I make it. I don't want to try. I want to be saved, man. Because you don't have to be very smart to see the condition of our world. You don't have to be some kind of insightful person. Just open your eyes and you see the demise of a nation. You see people who have turned themselves away from God. And you say to that, I want to turn to him. Lift your hands tonight. Join this one quickly. If you lift your hand, I want you to come. Sister, come right now. I want to pray for you. Just come right now. She's sit, she sitting beside you. Just come right now. Just come, sis. Come. God bless you. She raised her hand. Just come on. Come on. I'm going to pray for you. Just come. Come on. Just tell her she'll come with you. Yeah, come with her. God bless you. Listen, every, every believer, every Christian tonight, every child of God, every, 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 Labor every disciple. God bless you, sis. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Amen. I need somebody to come pray with her. Amen. Altar workers, God bless you. This brother, you raise your hand as well. Just come on. God bless you. Listen, you say, you know what, Pastor? I don't want to play anymore. It's a revival. This is a season of revival. Revive my soul again, Lord. I want to I wanna be excellent. I want to have that kind of temperance, that kind of patience, that kind of brotherly love and kindness and charity in my life. I want to exemplify God's nature. I want the old man to die and the new man to grow. I want to grow in Christ. I want to behave the way God behaves. I want to react like he reacts. I want to speak with the kind of grace that my speech is seasoned with salt, that I may know how to answer those that would hear. I want to be that man of God, that woman of God, that God has destined for me to be. Before the world began to spin, what God had in his mind for me, God bless you, sis. Just come find a place. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Every Christian, the Lord has spoken to you. Come find a place. Lay hold of God at the altar right now. Come add to your faith. Come come with spodeo, with, 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 with enthusiasm. So I want to be enthusiastic about this. I want to be enthusiastic about this. And I want to add. I want to add. I, I, I'm saved, but I got to roll. I got to roll through some stuff. I got to move through some things. I got to, I got to work some stuff out. I got to work it out, Pastor. I can't, I can't just, just think it's going to solve on its own. I got I to gotta confront some things. I got to push through some things. I got to move some things out the way. When you're rowing through water, it takes effort. I got to put some effort in this Christian life. I got to work it out. I got to work it out. Sometimes I want to sit on the sidelines. Sometimes I want to say, well, they hurt me. I, I got to work it out. I can't go quiet. I, I, can't, I can't take my ball and go home. I got to work it out. That's we worship God. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope. You are my hope and, and my, my inspiration. inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. Say it one more time. You're the rock. You're the rock of, of my, my salvation. 
salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope, my hope. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. I believe. My help, oh Lord. You have been my help in time of need. Lord, my God, my God. Lord, I'm gonna run to you. Lord, unto you will I cling. You're the rock. We stand on you, God. We trust in you, God. Because of you, oh God, oh God, you are my hope, my hope, my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I just say, You are the rock, you are the rock. I believe in you, believe in you for your faithfulness to me. You have been my head. Lord, unto you, just one more time, you're the rock, talk to Jesus, say God, I want to work it out, say God, I want to work it out, I want to be like you, you are my hope and my inspiration. I want to work it out. Unto you will I cry. I believe. I believe in you. I believe in you. For your faithfulness to me. You have been my help, Lord. You have been my help in time of need. Oh, Lord. Lord, unto you, unto you, unto you. Lord, unto you. Stand to your feet. Lord, unto you will I cling. Lord, unto you will I cling. Lord, unto you, oh, oh. you will I cling. Give him praise right where you stand. Give him glory right where you stand. Give him glory right where you stand. Some of you look at your, your life. You know, we, we have to take an assessment of our lives sometimes. And we have to, we have to kind of be honest with ourselves and, and, and just see what our life is producing. And if we are really reflecting God's nature and, and if, if, if the behavior and the, and the, and the, the epigenetics of God is, is being seen in us. And if we are really responding to things. And you can kind of look at your life and situation, how you respond to things. You say, you know what, tonight, Pastor, there's some areas I want to go forward in. There's some areas that I always, I get stuck in that cycle, man. It could be in your own area of temperance and anger. You, you find yourself getting angry and, and, and you find yourself saying things that you shouldn't say. And you just, you just, it's a repeat performance. But you see, you know what? I want to add some kindness. I want to add, I got to add it to my life. This doesn't come, it doesn't come, it doesn't come automatically. You have to, he says, add to your faith. Add, that, that faith is your behavior, the way you act. And you say, I want to start, I want to start, I want to start being what God's called me to be. I want to start talking about it. I want to be that person. You know, when you start being like Jesus, you start liking yourself. It's good when you like yourself, huh? You start having peace with yourself. You make peace with God. 
and you have peace with yourself. You sleep better. You treat people better. You make better decisions. You become fruitful. He says, you abound. And you're neither barren nor unfruitful. And you abound in every good work. This is the promise. And you say, I want to reap that promise tonight. I want you to come. I want to pray for you. Just come right now. I want, I want to get out of that cycle. I want to go forward. Just come right now. I want to go forward, man. I, 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 Pastor, I just, um, I, I should be further. I should be more. I really should be. I should be loving folks more. I, I kind of live on an island. It's not time for us to live on an island, church. We come to church and, and, and we can be kind of, you know, we, we can cocoon ourselves in the church. But we should be lights on a hill. We should be lights on the hill, man. People should be able to see, man, there's something about you. They should be able to see. You need to be, well, children of God need to be sprinkled everywhere throughout Boy has said, where you walk around, that you are the light, that you have something that someone needs. Do you believe that? You have valuable treasure. God's going to do some He's going to do a miracle in your life. I'm telling you something. God wants you to know that you belong. That you have a family. And sometimes you feel so all alone. You feel like, I don't, I don't have anyone. You feel so all alone. And God wants you to know that no one can love you like he loves you. And that you're not, you're not passed by. You're not damaged goods. He loves you. Oh, yeah, that's God touching you right there in his spirit. He wants you to know that. I'm telling you what he's telling me to tell you, that he's been after you for a long time, and he's kept you for such a time as this. Ah, that's the glory of God on you right there. I feel God. I feel God. I want you to lift your hands right now. Father, I thank you for these saints tonight. I thank you for the anointing that is flowing through this altar area. I thank you for your nature, your likeness. I thank you for the seed of God, Jesus. You say those that are born of his seed, they will not sin. And it means that that nature cannot sin. It is the old nature that sins. But the new nature, it lives, God. It thrives. And it only thrives as we add to it. And I pray that your church, your saints, will begin to add to this new nature, God. They will add virtue. They will be excellent men and women. They would add, God, temperance, God, that they would be those of sound mind. They will add patience, God, those that know how to wait, God, and those that know how to, to deliberate. Oh, God, they will add kindness. They will have a sense of joy and peace. Oh, God, there will be a harmony within their soul. I pray they will add the love of God, the agape. Oh, God, that shall give them the ability to transcend, God, and, and, and to love in spite of and this spite of. I pray tonight you use this church for your glory. You breathe the breath of life. You breathe fresh breakthrough anointing. Oh, God, bring deliverance. Break every yoke, every stronghold. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over this congregation in Jesus' name. Give him praise right now. That's God touching you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sir. Yeah! Ah, you know what I see? I see you like a man. Oh, I feel God, God's doing something in you. God's doing, I'm telling you. I see like a man walking by uh, uh, outside a store and you're looking through the window and you see something real nice. And when you see it, keep playing, and you see something real nice. And when you see it, you say, man, I can never have that. I never have that. I'll never be that. God says, it's a lie. God says, yes, you can. God says, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I'm going to take you places you never went before. I'm going to bring a divine turnaround and cause you to go forward. 
And you're going to go forward and grow and become the man God wants you to be. Woo! Lift your hands to God. Lift both of them up. In the name of Jesus, go power. Let the power of your spirit, there it is. There it is. Loose him in his spirit, in his mind, God. Make him free. Yeah. Make him free. Yeah. God bless you, Jesus. Let's love him tonight. Woo, I feel God. I feel an anointing of God's presence. That he just wants to, he wants to, God just wants to be, oh, Elmo Ed. He wants to dwell amongst you. Move in your life, in your heart. By the power of your spirit, God. In his life, for your glory. For your glory, God, raise him up. Keep him, God, from the evil one. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Man, the power of God. Oh, God, that heals hearts, that restores brokenness. Oh, God. Oh, God, do a miracle in our heart. There it is in your spirit. Go free from every unclean spirit, the blood of Jesus makes you free. My goodness. Sit will, sit will, sit will, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel God on you. I feel God on you. I feel God. You want God. You want God. Listen, he's more near than you realize. He's more real. Oh. I never think God is, has, 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 forgotten you or, or kind of like put you in the corner somewhere. He's suing you. And that sue is faith. You receive from God by faith. <laughs> I tell you what, faith. It unlocks the treasures of God for your life. I feel God touching you right now. In the name of Jesus, go free. Let the power of your spirit, God, rest upon him. Let him step into a dimension of the supernatural, even tonight, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, release, release, God. Oh, my God. Release it, release it. Tomorrow, <laughs> revival. Tomorrow, last night, man, I went quick, huh? Boy, I tell you. Ooh, I love you, man. I love this church. My God, the power of the Spirit of God flows in this place. But I want you to begin to just make make assessment of your life and say, what do I need to add? How can I become more like him? How can I reflect his nature? And Adam begot a son in his own image, his own likeness. God created Adam in his own likeness. When you get saved and born again, you're born into the likeness of God. In order for that to be seen, you have to add with enthusiasm. You have to row, row, row your boat. <laughs> You've got to row, man. Sometimes you want to say, I'm saved! But that's, that's a storm out there. You got to roll through it. I'm not preaching to you anything that I have to do myself. Rowing. Because I want to see, just like you want to see, Jesus. Give the Lord praise as the pastor comes. Sermons like this are exciting for the people of God. I mean, just a good reminder. Good reminder. I love what he said. You're not working in your salvation. You're working to experience your salvation. Amen. So think about it. What can you do tonight? What can you do for God tonight? What might be in your home that doesn't please him so you can get rid of it? What can you do for God tonight? And what can you do for God before church tomorrow? 
because there's people you know that God's putting on your heart right now that they need to hear this. They need to hear the gospel. You know, you do that for God. You evangelize for God. You evangelize. You share the gospel. This is part of the works in, in our salvation. You work and invite somebody. I believe it's going to work tomorrow. Honestly. You, you, someone's on your heart right now. Matter of fact, I want us to pray right now. I want you to put someone on your heart. And you're going to commit right now. I'm going to invite them. I'm going to invite them. And God is going to move. God's going to move powerfully tomorrow. Amen. Right now, let's lift our hands. Father God, we're asking right now that you'd see us, Lord, as we labor for you, God, in evangelism. We pray, God, you bless this, Father, as we will invite them. God, you put them on our heart. We take dominion in Jesus' name. Father, that they would experience your goodness. We bless you, Lord. God, I pray, move tomorrow. Multiplication in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mr. Jimmy Lee, would you please close our service in prayer?